Here I want to derive the angle sum formula for the tangent function using the geometry of complex numbers. So this is not quite as well known as the derivation involving complex numbers for the sum angle formula of sine and cosine, but I think it's just as nice or maybe even a little bit nicer. Okay, so our main tool will be the polar form of a complex number. So let's build that up. So let's suppose we've got a complex number, so it's of the form a plus bi, where a and b are real numbers, and i is our imaginary number, so in other words, the square root of negative 1. I call this complex number z. And now let's build the complex plane. So horizontally we have a real axis, and vertically we have an imaginary axis. So that means all of the pure real numbers are along this horizontal axis and all of the pure imaginary numbers are along this vertical axis. And everything else is somewhere else in this plane. So here I've put our point Z, which again is A plus BI, so that means it's A units along the real axis and B units along the imaginary axis, but that's taking the form B times I. So like I said, our goal is to build the polar form of this. So in order to think about that, let's make something that looks like a vector from the origin to this point Z. So it's something like that. And then from this vector, let's form a right triangle. And it's like the obvious right triangle. So I'll drop a vertical line down from Z to A, and that'll be the height of my triangle. Notice that the height of my triangle is B units. And then, make sure we know this is a right triangle, and drop the base this way, and this is going to be A units. Then, by the Pythagorean theorem, we know that this is the square root of A squared plus B squared units. And furthermore, we generally call this R for like radius or distance from the origin. And now let's notice there's one other part of this picture that we haven't named yet, and that would be this angle right here. So between this value R and this angle, we can reconstruct this complex number Z. So this is generally called the argument of Z, so ARGZ. And it's written, maybe we'd use the label theta for that. Now that we've filled in this picture, let's make some translations between this rectangular form of our complex number and this polar form. And we'll do that via the trigonometric functions. So if we take the cosine of this angle theta, let's see what we get. So we'll have cosine theta is A over R. So that's pretty clear, it's adjacent over hypotenuse. And then sine of theta will be equal to b over r. But we can easily solve those as follows. We have a equals r cos theta. And then we have b equals r sine theta. And then from here, we can put those back together. And we'll see that z, which is a plus bi, is r times cosine theta plus i r times sine theta. And that would be like the polar form of our complex number. Sometimes this is all wrapped up in Euler's formula, so we would write this as r e to the i theta, but we won't really worry about that. Now before we move on and tackle our problem, there's one more thing that I want to notice, and that is I can calculate the tangent without ever calculating this value r, although it's not hard to calculate the value r. So notice tangent of theta, in other words, sine over cosine will simplify down to b over a. So, in fact, it's really easy to find the tangent of the argument of a complex number given its rectangular form. It's really just equal to the imaginary part of z divided by the real part of z. And that's what we'll use as we derive this identity. Now that we've reviewed a bit about the geometry of complex numbers and their polar form, we're ready to derive our identity, this sum angle formula for tangent. So how could we do that? Well, I'd like to introduce two complex numbers. So let's set z equal to the complex number 
cosine alpha plus i times sine of alpha. So notice the r value here is one. In other words, the distance from the radius of this number z is one. But then if we expand this into rectangular form and write this as a plus b times i, then we see that the tangent of alpha is equal to b over a. That's maybe the most important part of what we're writing down here. Again, the tangent of the argument of a complex number is equal to the imaginary part divided by the real part. Now we'll do the same thing over here for another complex number, w. So let's set w equal to cosine beta plus i sine beta. Again, the r value is one. And then we can expand this in rectangular form as c plus di where again, C and D are just the appropriate real numbers. In fact, C is cosine beta and D is sine beta. Now we can make a similar observation to what we did right here, and we'll see that the tangent of beta is equal to D over C. Again, the tangent of the argument is always the imaginary part divided by the real part. So now we've got something in terms of tangent alpha and tangent beta, and our goal is for something in terms of tangent alpha plus beta. So let's, so let's work towards that. Let's take the product of these two numbers, z and w. So that'll give us cosine alpha plus i times sine alpha, and then we'll have cosine beta plus i times sine of beta. So carefully multiplying this out will give us cos alpha cos beta minus sine alpha sine beta. So that's what we get from multiplying these two cosines and multiplying these two sines using the fact that i times i is negative one. Then for our imaginary part, we'll have plus i times, let's see, sine alpha cos beta plus sine beta cosine alpha. So that's what we have in this polar form. And from here, we'll use trigonometric identities for the sine and the cosine function. So I won't derive these. I'll just kind of use these as being well known. So this guy right here is in fact cosine of alpha plus beta. And this guy right here is in fact sine of alpha plus beta. Okay, so that's what we've calculated to be z times w. But then on the other hand, using these two rectangular expansions of z times w, we have another form. So notice this is equal to a times c minus b times d plus i times a d plus b c. So let's maybe underline that in blue to show that that's coming from the product of these two rectangular forms. And now we're running out of room, so let's take this line to the top and then we're ready to finish it off. So far, we've introduced two complex numbers, z and w. The argument of z was alpha and the argument of w was beta. That gave us the value of the tangent of alpha and the tangent of beta. Then, via some complex number arithmetic, we arrived at the following equation involving the cosine and the sine of alpha and beta and these kind of rectangular components. Now we're ready to put it all together. So, notice we can take the imaginary part of the left-hand side, divide the real part of the left-hand side, and do the same thing on the right-hand side, and we'll have the same object. And that's because we have an equality here. So let's do that. We've got sine of alpha plus beta over cosine of alpha plus beta is indeed equal to AD plus BC over AC minus BD. Then from here, we'll do some simplification on both sides. So here, we'll multiply the numerator and the denominator by 1 over AC. And then here, we'll just use the fact that sine over cosine is tangent. So that gives us tangent alpha plus beta equals, let's see what the simplification does. We have D over C from this first term, plus we have B over A for the second term, over one minus b over a times d over c. 
but then remembering that these quotients d over c and b over a are related to the tangent of alpha and beta, we are quickly able to rewrite this as the tangent of alpha plus the tangent of beta over one minus this product tan alpha plus tangent beta. But that is the classic tangent sum angle identity that we were going for. And we got there by looking at arguments of complex numbers. And that's a good place to stop.